<clears throat> Welcome back to the Brody Bunch podcast. <laughs> I love uh, uh, the Brody, Brody Bunch. So uh, we're all here today, all the bros. Uh, we have a total of six guests. Uh, our first guest is Luke Jones. Hello, thank you. Uh, I'm ecstatic to be here, to be honest. And then uh, right next to him, we have Leonardo About to Bull. Uh, yeah, terrific being here, man. And then we have uh, Finn Wardman. I love GDP. And then we have Tristan Chapman. My two favorite things is economics and donuts. I would love to hear more about them together. I can confirm that for him. We will uh, be doing this later, actually. Uh, no that's true, actually. We will I be discussing these topics. One little shout out to uh, Ted for being our uh, microphone holder. Thank you. Doing. Thank you, Tio. He's the people's people. But uh, to get into it, today we'll be discussing GDP, real growth, and economic donut. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I love, the, I love I, I donut like, economics. More economic. Commonly, more commonly known as donut economics. Wait, what is economic donuts? Well, I have a definition here. Economic donut, or more commonly known as donut economics, is a new view on society put forward by Kate Raworth essentially exploring the growth of a country in a more balanced way that allows both humans and our planet to thrive sustainably. And that, do you concur with this perspective? Well, I'm not the one who's going to be talking uh, about course. that. Okay, in fact, yeah. you guys will Would be. Like we have two teams, yeah. I think Tristan and Finn are together. They'll be arguing for uh, GDP, is it? Yes. Uh, for GDP but being a good I, indicator I mean, of development. Whether it's a valid measure for an economy yeah. and for growth. I think you guys believe that. You guys seem certain. But then we also have Leo and Luke who will be arguing for what? Yeah, uh, we're we there. hate GDP and we think it's a really invalid measure yeah. of we're economic growth. proponents of no. the donut economics. And we also believe that uh, economic growth isn't necessarily good in all circumstances. So uh, we'll be right about getting into it. One last thing. Uh, let's go! I think I think we should start by first uh, clarifying uh, the economic donut so mm -hmm. to start off with uh, picture a donut in the hole in the middle we have all of society's needs so that's income education food wa water and we call that the uh, social foundation yes and uh, if I would like to elaborate on this the outer ring of the donut, so to speak, is the safe and just space for humanity. This is the social ideal for an economy to be at. And above that, the ridge of the donut, if you might <clears throat> like to think of it as that, <clears throat> is the environmental ceiling. Could you give examples? Yes. Uh, well, the environmental ceiling is essentially the protection of the environment that will actually be broken if either economic growth is at too fast of a rate or economic resources factors of production are being used in excess. For example, fossil fuels. If we use a large amount of fossil wow. fuels, the environmental ceiling will break and issues such as climate change and freshwater use and land use change will arise. Well, you and really that's, seem to um, really develop that's our whole issue with uh, economic growth because um, economic growth obviously means the usage of economic resources such as land, labor, etc. And by using these resources, we end up uh, breaking the environmental ceiling and causing such horrific things such as <clears throat> climate change, etc. Exactly. Okay, well, I think we've heard a lot about yeah. this uh, economic donut. <laughs> yes. So we're going to be hearing Wait, from Tristan and Finn. I have a Finn. question for Leo. So you oh, say absolutely. that as an economy grows, it'll start harming the environment more and using more factors of production. Yes. So Technically that's right. But what if an economy became more efficient and started using the, the factors of production that they have like that are fixed, they can't increase in quantity of so, more efficiently. So like lowering costs and things like that? Well, that's, that's um, a really excellent assumption, but if we look at real life, uh, of course we can see that's not happening because we clearly see that climate change is a scientific fact that is occurring. So if the economy were to reach this so-called efficiency, it would mm -hmm. have to abandon this illusion of eternal economic growth and basically cool down for a while Deep because stuff. economic growth wow. is not necessarily yeah. oh, wow. required. Well, yeah, we do actually have. Leaving. We do I think, actually. I think we'd like to hear more from Finn and Tristan now. So, would you guys like to talk about it? Yep. So, um, on this side of the room, we actually do believe that GDP is a good indicator of development, and that economic growth and development is a good thing. So, like I uh, hinted at earlier, we believe that as a as an economy becomes more developed, they can become more efficient and more allocatively efficient with their resources and um, can actually save, uh, in fact, help the environment. And we're seeing yeah. that now, because there's a, that, sorry, one second. There's a global movement to 
help and save the environment, and we've seen that from more developed economies. So basically what Tristan's saying is that a high GDP is essentially good for the economy, right? A high GDP means more is being produced, right? There's more uh, purchasing power by the consumers. That means there's more employment. So high GDP is good. But the problem is that GDP is quite broad in general, but there is some advantages to the GDP because it yeah. does single it out as a raw number. Does anyone number. have a definition for GDP? Yeah, I was about to say that we should probably define what GDP oh, yeah, is go before ahead. discussing it. No, uh, you guys. For go. these uh, uneducated <laughs> listeners, yes. Viewers, Would you like to, Leo? Uh, you seem um, pretty knowledgeable in donuts. You I mean, can. I, I, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you could help. <laughs> Essentially, you GDP is the, the monetary value of all finished goods and services made within a country during a specific time period. Would you like to say the formula, the specific economic formula for that? I, 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 would, I would love to see. Oh, the, Luke, go, um, go well, ahead. in terms of letters, because it's a formula that is represented by letters. I think they'd like these, to hear it in words, so yeah, they get a better Okay, exactly. in words, in words, yes. Um, so this is consumers, consumer spending, plus investment by okay. firms. Plus government spending, mm -hmm. so C plus I plus G plus, and then the difference between a country's exports and imports. This being the net balance. Yeah. So this well, is simplified to C plus G plus I plus brackets X minus M. Exactly. Yes. Very simple, Finn. Thank you very much. Um, would you guys like to talk a little bit about how uh, GDP could be in, in, in equal or it could represent basically what is wrong with an economy? Well, um, I think the fixation with GDP, because um, as we've mentioned before, it's, it mm -hmm. calculates a very specific number of things. It's, it's a number, but that number isn't necessarily representative of the well-being of uh, people. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I'll just... yeah. yeah exactly. um, so essentially what we're trying to say with this point is that economic growth could potentially be at the expense of future generations and could be unsustainable growth, i.e. harming the environment and potentially making species of animals extinct or ruining or deterring supplies of economic resources for the future, thus creating lower standards of living. I, w I was uh, referring to basically, for example, say a country has two billionaires, but the rest of the population all earn under $5,000 a month. How is that unfair? See, um, for example, if we were to calculate, uh, I think... Uh, GDP overall, it would involve all of these calculations of government spending, etc. And also, it could be used measuring incomes. Now, the fact that there are two billionaires and several, well, uh, lower income individuals, that would skew the GDP because mm -hmm. it, would, it would not measure wealth inequality in a sufficient way because Absolutely. these two billionaires could be earning an insane amount of money. And uh, while well, the rest live in abject poverty, and of course, that isn't representative of the Sanders leveling because we want to include as many people as possible in this economic donut, not just two people. And this is one of the reasons as to why you don't agree with GDP. Yeah, this, yeah, this essentially makes GDP a less accurate so, view of... So, Leo, you're right. saying that you don't believe that GDP and GDP per capita, which is what you were talking about yeah, with the billionaires capita, and things like that, is not uh, a valid... Um, measure for measure. well-being, exactly, etc. Yeah. So you believe it isn't? No. Yeah. Okay, okay, well, I'd like to jut in. I understand what you're stating, but sometimes you need a simple, you need a simple way to understand. You need a simple raw figure. You need a, a, like, a number that's easy to understand, that anyone can understand. And also another advantage of GDP is that it's universal, right? It's universal. Anyone can use it to look at any country. Anyone can look at anyone's country's GDP. I think it's, it's simple and as well, which is a good thing for exactly. analysts. Yeah, it is. It is. I will, I will say that it is compare. very easy to compare. And sometimes, and that's good. sometimes that's And it's better. good to calculate. You don't, it's easy. I mean, yeah. I think we so can all agree. Everything here is good and it all helps the economy become but, more... But um, the thing is, animal. even if it's easier to compare, I think we have to think about are we comparing the, the, the right thing? Because just comparing GDP uh, doesn't necessarily mean like greater standards of living. I mean, if you take the GDP of Luxembourg, like, it's very small. But if you take the GDP of a country like Nigeria, it's exponentially larger yeah. than the GDP of Luxembourg, but their standards of living are clearly different. Uh, Luxembourg being a developed country and uh, 
Nigeria being a developing country, I think is the term. Yeah, I'd say that's right. Tristan? So, you're saying the GDP is not good, but what other alternatives are there? Because GDP is one of the be best ones we have. And I know the UN, they use the Human Development Index, which involves, takes into three factors. The GDP, the liter literacy rates, along with the life expectancy. So, is would you rather use that instead then? Because that's what the UN have said they're using well uh something like that something that definitely moves past this obsession with of uh gdp so i mean if you could give me some examples uh luke of things that we could use <clears throat> um well there are multiple ways to measure gdp and one of these principal ones is income and my partner and associate leonardo will elaborate on this being typically one of the most used however potentially the most inaccurate yeah because, uh, well, well, uh, the inaccuracy of, like, these measurements, which kind of links into what I was saying, um, a lot of people can hide their income, some income is not reported, etc. And also, as Tristan said with the HDI, it, they, s a lot of the measurements, such as, like, they measure education through literacy rates, they're supplemental to GDP, so it's clear that GDP is not enough to measure an economy. So, so what would you suggest instead? Well, uh, something mixing in uh, the inequality of the country. GDP per capita is sort of a good way because, as mentioned before, GDP per capita can be skewed but it because if there's some one, aspects. yeah, there's one billionaire and ninety nine thousand, well, lower income individuals, it'll give it's some sort of median, and that isn't representative yeah. of it skews most the people. nominal value. I think everyone exactly. can agree with what you just said. Um, yeah, Tristan, that, Finn, do you have anything to say? Um, Actually, I would like I mean, to ask oh, yeah. you, why, oh, yeah. why do you think growth in itself is, is good for society? Well, because we become more sustainable then. As in, I know that as you grow, you use more factors of production, things like that. You pollute more. Uh, companies try to be more efficient, things like that. But surely if it's becoming more efficient and more growth and more aware, and as you've seen in the last 20, 30 years, not 30 years, but 20, 10 years, that... The economy has developed almost globally. Does anyone know the definition of economic growth? Because from what I know, economic growth is defined as an increase in a nation's production of goods and services. Something that a lot of exactly. countries strive for, but in most, in some cases, can be uh, harming and uh, damaging. Well, but Finn, do you have anything to say? Well, obviously, growth means high production, okay? And like I said before, more jobs, there's more employment, there's better wages, okay? This this growth is just overall very good for an economy. Although it may not be good for the environment because firms uh, have more incentive to pollute, of course, to cut costs and stuff. Do you think people are becoming more aware of this issue and are making changes? What, environmental problems? Well, they're, they're starting to see how economic growth has, well, has yeah, started to Because obviously for firms, it's cheaper for them to pollute rather than to... Yeah. I mean, I think Be in the past we've seen firms want to grow so fast and make so much money, mm -hmm. say maybe for the Industrial Revolution that we hurt the world so mm -hmm. bad. But now more firms are starting to become more aware mm -hmm. and uh, due to more protests, all this, we're now. making positive yeah, changes. Regulations, there's taxes. So. Yeah. What you, is the government doing a good job to prevent this, do you think? Yeah, I, I feel like they could do a bit more. Like right now, it's not that big of a problem, but of course they could do a bit more. They could tax a bit more companies. They should subsidize more com companies that are uh, not pollutant. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think economic growth is good, but as long as it's regulated. So we don't just have uh, these oligopoly companies that are just polluting the world and things like that. And I think if it's actually regulated by the government, by, uh, from aware people, people are protesting, yeah. things like that. I think this is what the donut uh, economic theory basically talks about, finding a middle ground between you know, sustainable growth and for humans to be happy. But do you guys want to yeah, touch well, on I that? Just, I'd just like to jump in for a second because that is all well and good in the, the theory side of it. But in a practical sense, in most real life examples, such as in the US, wages have not accompanied productivity, thus essentially causing the system to favor wealthy capitalists and favor the rich in general. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, as we have become more productive, we're producing more goods um, in a sh shorter period of time. Wages haven't really kept up with that. And instead, um, well, rich billionaires and millionaires, etc., kind of reap all the benefits of economic growth, leaving the rest of the population behind. And yeah, I mean, it might cause some employment, but again, you mentioned climate change. You have to think, if, if that employment 
truly means anything if in the end of the day we're just harming the yeah. environment so much that it will basically ruin future generations. I mean, we're already seeing desertification in Africa, etc. A lot of water shortages and yeah. all that and kind of this stuff. also, I, um, another point that I like to add is that the fact that economic growth favors the rich also widens the gap between the poor and the rich of all economies that experience exponential economic growth. For example, the rich will get richer and the poor will not be able to keep up with this. Do you think this is uh, an increasing issue or are we yeah, getting better? I do better? think it's an e increasing issue because it is actually one of the macroeconomic In aims. In or developing countries more than... Um, yeah. I'd say it's a mixture of both. In developed economies, certainly the, the rich benefit a lot more on uh from the economic growth experienced and while in developing economies there's well there's higher economic growth of course because they are developing at a faster rate than developed mm -hmm. economies um a lot of the poor is still being left behind i mean for example there are many articles which state that india um there are there's there's an increasing creation of an upper class in india but not really of a solid middle class so not enough people are being raised out of poverty in india for example Tristan, do you have any rebuttals or comments to add? Uh, yep, I was just gonna say. So, um, I forgot it. Just give me three seconds. Let's well, wrap it. I just turn around back one to me. Thing. Um, I was gonna pose a theoretical question to you guys. Do you think this uh, issue is gonna? Well, how do you think countries from this point onwards will change the way they're growing? That's what I was going to say, and oh, right. you took it out of my mouth, but perfect. Yeah, what were you going to say? That I was going to say, exactly, for Tristan to us, like, what solutions are you offering are you, to Are you asking us, or do you I was going to ask Leo, well, like, I agree that Leo uh, income... Leo, often, any of you yeah. think that, you know, countries should do things a certain way so that they find a middle ground between sustainable growth and economic growth, so that Absolutely. everyone is happy? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. they were talking about uh, income inequality, and actually things like progressive taxes government interventions and methods like that can actually resolve this issue and make economic growth more sustainable and decrease the gap in decrease the gap in the income levels i mean we've seen some countries like uh scandinavian like countries take a more sustainable and env environmental approach but some countries are still trying to grow to try and basically help the people as much economically even if they are hurting the country yeah um i'd just like to add on to tristan's point because i thought that was really interesting um I feel like the developed economies especially have kind of already reaped the benefits enough and they don't exactly need to grow further. Therefore, they should focus more on redistributive programs for income levels, for example, lowering the wage gap and abandon growth completely. And as growth further, despite obviously benefiting the rich, which is the main reason in which developed economies do this, it could fracture or completely break the environmental ceiling and it will not eventually result in a good outcome for developed economies. And so yeah, um, as Luke was saying, if developed economies, because they've already reaped so many of the benefits of economic growth, mm -hmm. um, they should focus on abandoning growth and as Luke said, getting more like redistributive progresses and as Tristan said, pro progressive taxation, etc. And so mm -hmm. they should kind of make way, make space for Develop, developing economies to experience yeah. some growth, which can indeed bring about some benefits, as, as uh, Finn mentioned, you know, of employment, et cetera, uh -huh. and wages. So just to emphasize on what you just said, you just talked about how developed economies should just stop growing and make way for developing economies. I, mean, well, I, don't, think I, think, I don't think that's I think that was a bit of a I think you turned that, uh, you used that term a little bit too uh, seriously. I think no I mean, country can stop yeah. Oh, yeah. producing yeah. economically. Everyone has no to keep No country growing. will ever do that, so. Well, um, I think when we, we say abandon point. economic growth, I don't mean stop growing. I mean actively stop pursuing this goal of eternal growth. I mean, guys, I think we had a really good discussion wow. today. I yeah, think this no, is an incredible discussion. We have, uh, we have uh, a word from our sponsor today. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Funny you should mention this, Lucas. Our sponsor today is actually Brody Bricks. It's an incredible, it's an incredible cereal. And uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I eat it every day. But every I my morning. Brody I, I, I Brody Bricks is so good. It keeps me going. Me my day. The and only actually, reason I can do this job is because of them. Yeah, exactly. Um... And Brody Bricks have been kind enough to uh, reach out to our podcast because they obviously saw the theme of it. Brody, the, bro they gave the, us, the Brody they gave us 50 Brody bucks. 
Yeah, they gave. <coughs> well, I don't think we were supposed to release. It doesn't that. matter, um, but we're rich no, now. But, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys can actually please, go to BrodyBrooks.com. Please use code Brody but Bricks. You know, fifty Brody Bucks X. doesn't do much these days because of the inflation. The Brody uh, stand inflation rate is quite high these days. Guys, we I can. Don't think we were we're buying less and less, but that. Inflation is for next podcast. Guys, we'll this wasn't talk about that podcast. next week. Guys, Come guys, uh, next no, 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 no. I think we have one more thing to do. Um, like everything in life, I think everyone likes a little bit of closure. So, would you guys like to give conclusions? I would love to Leo, give a would conclusion. You like to go first? Sure. Oh. So, um, okay. So, overall, donut economics. It's its main uh, theory and proposition is that we abandon economic growth and abandon the focus on GDP and focus more on the environment, wealth inequality, etc., as a measure of the well-being for people. I think we I can think thank Kate for introducing that, uh, that perspective into life for us. But Tristan, what do you have to say? Or Finn? I think, um, speaking on behalf of Finn as well, on this side of the room, uh, we, we agree with what lots of what you said, talking about how economic growth can be unsustainable for future generations and how actually GDP can be a bad and miss and bad measure of economic but growth. I think we could come to a meeting point in the center that growth is good and bad at the same time, but we shouldn't just abandon it like that. Wise words from Finn Wardman, everyone. Wow. Round of applause. Round of applause oh, for Finn Wardman. I think to end it on a light note, would you like to hear some donut jokes? Well, I'd love to. I'd love Honestly, to. I've been waiting the entire podcast. Good good I won't good. lie, me too. Um, so basically, <clears throat> number one. Number one. Why did the donut become a priest? Why did it? Why? Wait, wait. Don't try and guess. Wait, let me guess. No need to wait. I can tell you. Guys, if you didn't catch that, Finn just said, I do not know. (laughs) Uh, Basically, the answer to why did the donor become a priest is, he felt very holy. (laughs) Wait, I don't get it. Well, we have some slow people on the podcast. Um, thank you very much for listening. Oh, actually, um, just one last uh, shout out to our our mic person, thank Ted. You, thank you to Teddy. Thank even though Ted. even though our fifty uh, Brody bucks will go towards him because he asked for a lot of money, we still appreciate him. <laughs> he does um, actually work very expensive. And, and, and it, it wasn't even so he wasn't even that good. He doesn't even have his shoes on, and it stunk up the room. But it's oh, okay. It's okay. It it's okay. So uh, thank you, everyone, from for listening. We, maybe one last word from everyone. Jeez. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Microwave. <laughs> Thanks, and we'll see you next time on the Brody, Brody Bunch Bunch yeah. Podcast with all the bros. Thank you. Bye. Oh, Bye. I'm, I'm done. Done. Guys, good podcast. That was really-